Recently, I reviewed a compact 50mm SV28 spotting scope. This is its big brother, the 70mm SV28. I'm going to unbox this puppy, take a look at its external features, its fit and finish, and then we're going to take a look at its glass. And we're going to see if size does matter, if bigger is better. Let's get started. Okay, this is the SV Boney SV28 spotting scope. This is the 70 millimeter version. Specifically, it is a 25 to 75 power by 70 millimeter spotting scope. And this is the an SV28 um, similar to the SV28 model I previously reviewed, but that was a 50 millimeter scope. And the marketing person over at SV Boney uh, saw that review and wanted to send me the 70 millimeter to evaluate. Uh, thank you for that. And by the way, she said it is pronounced SV Boney, so whatever. This is uh, their, I'm assuming, non-retail packaging, just based on the plainness of the outside of the box. Just a plain brown cardboard box. And typically, things are like this for, um, to, for product to be sold strictly online because you don't need the fancy graphics and the pictures and whatnot um, that you would for the retail version, which would sit in a brick and mortar shelf somewhere to try to attract your eye. So I'm guessing that's why this is so plain looking. Anyway, let's take a look inside. And we have a similar stamped metal sheet um, steel um, tripod. And we have our carrying bag. Okay. Have our bag. Huh. No logo, no graphics on the outside. Very plain. And inside we have some um, soft velvet separator here. Um, that's for placing between your tripod and your scope. And let's take a look. And we have the scope. We have a microfiber cleaning cloth. Instructions. And... Well, it has a strap already included. Okay, so let's take a look at this scope. And wow, this lens cap, the rear lens cap, really doesn't, barely is barely on there. So that would have been nicer if they had this fitted a little better. And it does have a front lens cap. And oh, look at that. Check that out. Look at how much of a gap there is on the um, integrated sunshade there. That is. Okay, I must manage to push that into place, but it still does not bode well in terms of overall fit and finish. Okay, so I'm going to open it up. Oh, the tube is plastic. Okay, and... Alright. And overall fit and finish isn't bad. Well, it's, again, just like the 50 millimeter version, um, could be a little bit better overall. It's got a front focus knob, which turns smoothly. And the rear eyepiece has the um, magnification that moves the entire eyepiece. And can you hear that? Yeah, it feels like it's grinding a little bit. Not very smooth. Okay, but um, the proof is in the pudding. We'll take this out to uh, see what we can see through the actual eyepiece. And just want to point out here, this is the size of, um, if you can get this to focus, this is the size of the ocular lens. Kind of small. But let's, oh, quickly take a look at how big this thing is. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 inches long. 3, 4, 5, yeah, five inches tall. So um, let's take a look uh, outside and see how this thing performs. All right, we're gonna start this test at 25 power. We are looking at the peak of Mount Davidson, approximately 1200 yards away. In the center of the frame, you can see the peak, uh, as well as a white uh, trail marker sign. That's about 30, uh, 30 inches tall on a five, six foot tall pole. That's peeking out from uh, the bushes there. Uh, let's pan down from this position over to a cliff 
500 yards away. And let me just tighten this down here and we can see some of the detail. Just zoom in on the camera just to make sure we have good focus. Okay, let's zoom back out. And we are looking at a cliff face, a rocky cliff face, uh, f approximately 500 yards away, and we can s get good detail on the erosion control netting, and as well as the uh, anchor points that they've uh, put into the hillside. And we can see at the very top, um, I'll move this over to the center of the image here, that is actually graffiti on the rocks there. So it's a good opportunity to um, Let's zoom in. Much smaller eye box, and we have that graffiti in the center. Let's see if I can get any better focus on that. There we go. I think that's better. Fortunately, it is a fairly calm day, so we don't have to worry about. Well, you don't have to worry about camera shake from the tripod due to the wind. It's just all me adjusting the tripod that's causing the shake. Uh, all right, so we have some graffiti that we can clearly see at uh, 75 power. And let me just pan or tilt that down over to the erosion control netting, which you can see even finer detail. There is even smaller cables within the larger cable structure, just so you can see how much detail you can pick up at 75 power with this scope. And let's move over to a nearer object, in this case, a pine tree, which is 50 yards away. And we're just gonna look at the very top of this pine tree just to get some of the detail. All right, so we are looking at a tree 50 yards away, approximately 80 feet tall. And we are looking at the pine cones at the very top of that tree. And let's zoom bring up the uh, magnification again to its maximum, 75. Let me switch down the tripod there. And we got some nice pine cones to stand in for birds. Okay, we are looking at pine cones 50 yards away. They're about 80 feet up. And I'm just noticing this issue with uh, the focus. And it appears to be um, something misaligned or uh, some manufacturing or assembly issue with the uh, focus knob. It, it um, totally moves the image. There we go. You can see it moving up and to the left. Now, I'm not an optical engineer. I'm just trying to describe what I'm seeing here, but the image is distorting. It's shifting slightly to the left as I'm adjusting the focus, and I can feel a little bit of a bump as I'm turning uh, the focus knob, as if um, one of the teeth isn't meshing properly. Uh, again, I suspect this is a um, this was a, a defect in how this particular unit was assembled or manufactured. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this particular unit was sent to me by SV Boney to review. Had I purchased this, I would be returning it for an exchange because I do think that this is a, a defect. Now, take this with a grain of salt. I did contact SV Boney's customer service directly in Hong Kong. And to their credit, they responded to me fairly quickly. I didn't I didn't tell them that I was a reviewer and I didn't tell them that I got it through their marketing channels. I acted like a normal consumer. And they responded to me within half an hour and not with an automated email, an actual conversation with a real human. This got me thinking, um, companies like Vortex have made their reputation on their warranty and great customer service, despite having some recent quality control issues with their optics. And people are willing to cut Vortex slack because Vortex will send you a replacement scope. So to be fair, I should cut SV Boney some slack because they're willing to send me a replacement scope, which, by the way, cost five times less than a Vortex. Just saying. Okay, moving along. Let's see how it performs at very long distance. We are looking at radio towers on a hilltop approximately five miles away at 25 power. Now, our atmospheric conditions, we've got a, quite a bit of marine haze this morning, so the image is not going to be as vibrant or as uh, contrasty as it could be, but you know, these are natural conditions here. 
and we are getting you know good detail um, at uh, its lowest power setting. And uh, let's bump it up to its maximum of 75. Our eye box is getting quite a bit narrowed when we do zoom in. And let's see if I can get any better focus on those radio towers. Okay, so that is the radio tower at 75 power. Next, we're going to see how well the scope resolves fine details. We're at the range to test how clearly we can spot 22 caliber holes on paper targets 100 yards away. And if you've enjoyed the review thus far, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're looking at two targets 100 yards away at 75 power, and we can easily make out the 22 caliber holes on the 2 inch shoot and see bullseye on the left target, and you can also clearly make out two additional holes on paper. Next, for an objective measure of its ability to resolve detail, let's take a look at the U.S. Air Force's optical resolution chart on the right. The optics of this scope can clearly resolve both vertical and horizontal lines down to element 6 in group negative 1 on the right. And for comparison, that is three elements better than the SV-28 50mm scope that I reviewed in a previous episode. Now, at 75 power, the eye relief was kind of tight and there was noticeable vignetting, but as you can see here, there is very little chromatic aberration. There's no purple fringing along the edges of the image, even in the white of the target frame. Okay, I'm going to summarize my opinions about the scope, but before I do, I want to ask you to please hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Leave me a comment if you have any thoughts or suggestions, especially if you have the scope or other SV Boney models. So there you go, the SV28 in 70mm. Surprisingly good optical performance despite deficiencies in construction and quality control, and like Vortex, they seem committed to prompt and responsive customer service to resolve problems, even for their least expensive budget scope. And this thing retails for less than 60 bucks. So if you know of a scope that has better optics than this for 60 bucks, please let me know, leave a comment. But if you're interested in picking up one of these scopes, I'll include more information on my blog, moondogindustries.com. Thanks again for watching. Moondog, out. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.